start off, Turbot, uh, we're 100% API driven. Uh, we're a GraphQL backend. Uh, so any actions or any query or information that you're going to see in this graphical interface or this console, uh, you can do from an API perspective. Uh, we have a Turbot CLI that you can leverage uh, for, for higher level commands. Uh, we, also ha we also are a provider in Terraform, so you can manage Turbot at scale uh, using Terraform as well. Uh, so uh, the console here, uh, users can interface with Turbot uh, through a console or a GUI layer uh, that you can have multiple directories that are associated to Turbot. So here I'm going to log in with my Google Auth credentials, my Turbot.com credentials, but you can you can integrate uh, your Amazon SSO, your Azure AD, ADFS, uh, Okta, Ping Identity, you know, any LDAP, any SAML-based directory, or multiples of them uh, to the product, and users can authenticate in. Uh, so I'm going to log in with my personal credentials here. Uh, I already did MFA this morning, so I'm now just re-authenticating back in, but any uh, multi-factor authentication would uh, occur through your directory provider that you, you've integrated with. Uh, when you're authenticated, uh, as yourself, you land into a profile page uh, and you can see your audit activity. Uh, so these are all the actions that I've taken. Uh, some of them were in uh, Amazon, others, uh, if I go back, uh, some things were in GCP, Azure. And so uh, in this, this personal audit trail, I could see my personal activities and drill into the information. I can also see some of my favorited uh, sections of my hierarchy. Uh, and then I can drill in and, and get into the product itself. Uh, but before I move forward with anything in Turbot, I'll just showcase how you know, Turbot is an interface that administrators can use to manage policies and identities. They can discover and search across their entire configurations across multi-cloud. Uh, for developers or application teams, they might be using the product to, um, to also do the same thing. So they might be delegated authority to manage policies and identities. Uh, or at minimum, they can see what their policies and identities are in their applications uh, and uh, see all the configuration changes and drift and audit trail. Uh, but you don't have to use Turbot as an inline tool. Uh, you don't have to use us for authentication. Uh, your developers don't even have to know that Turbot exists. Uh, it could just be a tool for the cloud team. So it depends on how you want to deploy and roll out Turbot. Uh, but just to show that we're working in behind the scenes, uh, I'm going to just demo, just quickly get into like an Amazon account as an example, uh, spin up an S3 bucket, uh, and show you how Turbot reacts to some of the configuration changes in the environment. Uh, so as I get into my Amazon account, this is an example where you could use Turbot to uh, assume roles in your Amazon environments. Uh, so you could use us to uh, log in as uh, either roles that Turbot defines and our own role-based role access controls. Uh, you can use our roles and modify them for your preference, or you can bring in your own roles and then use that in Turbot so that you, you can use us to uh, handle your assume role model. And we also do a user-based model uh, with associated roles. Uh, so there's a number of different um, authentication measures we can do in Amazon, or you just don't use us at all for that, those type of features. Uh, in Azure, uh, in Google, uh, users would just log in directly to your portals uh, or to your console. Um, but this is just an extension feature that we have for Amazon. Uh, so when I go log in as a, uh, as a super user, I'm now federated into my Amazon account with Bob at Turbot.com, assuming the super user role. Uh, here, I'm just a developer in this example. I have immediate access into Amazon. I could be interacting with Amazon through the CLI, through Terraform, CloudFormation, um, any SDK. It doesn't matter how you deploy or how you make changes in your cloud provider. Turbot's reacting towards events. So as changes are occurring, that's what Turbot's reacting, um, re reacting towards. And so in this example, if Bob created a S3 bucket um, and he created it in the right region here, um, so you know, maybe US East is allowed in this example. Uh, the developer will, had self-service to create the bucket. But as a cloud team or as an enterprise or an organization, you, know, you might allow your self-service to your developers, but you can't trust that they either know or care what type of configurations that need to be ensured. And so whether it may be versioning or encryption or certain tagging policy should be in place, uh, that the developer, you can't expect them to actually know all those configuration details and always get it right at all times. 
And this is the value of Turbot where you can marry the agility for the developer to just do things themselves, like spin up a bucket, make changes, but Turbot's gonna come in and ensure control in real time. So if I just refresh the page, Turbot picked up that the bucket exists, it captured it in the CMDB, it automatically then enabled versioning. It automatically then ensured encryption, in trans or encryption at rest with AES-256. It also tagged the environment so it automatically tagged it with you know, key value pairs in this example. It's a simple example of just you know, automatically tag it with the company key, but the value is uh, Bob's Bagels, and that's a static key value pair, where others were handled through inheritance. So the, this bucket pulled in a higher level metadata from a folder structure and brought down that this is part of the sales organization, uh, this, this bucket. Uh, it also marked some things non-compliant because they weren't set correctly or it automatically tagged it with the bucket name, and this is showcasing how uh, the policies can interact with the CMDB behind the scenes and pull in context. So understanding the bucket name can only happen after the bucket's created. And this is an example where we brought in the bucket name in this, in this example into the tagging. It also did some interesting things like tagged it with who created the bucket, uh, at what time, it derived a static, uh, uh, static prefix with a dynamic um, uh, value uh, for the cost center. And so we did some interesting things behind the scenes and I'll showcase what that looks like from a policy standpoint. Uh, but just to show it's not just on creation of resources, also around updates. And so if I updated uh, this you know, simple company, Bob's Bagels to you know, Dave's Pizza Shop and saved it, well, as a super user, those type of changes are allowed. Uh, but Turbot's not going to like that because the policy is to enforce that Bob's Bagels is the actual value for that key that's accepted. And so if I just give it a second, refresh the page here. Turbot already picked up that you know Dave's Pizza wasn't accepted and automatically then changed it back to Bob's Bagels. And Turbot's doing more complex things behind the scenes. It's it's setting the 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 public access block uh, per your configurations. It's also doing uh, bucket policy statements like to ensure encryption in transit or explicitly deny certain encryption keys that aren't approved. There's more advanced use cases around what your policy statements are, if they're allowed or rejected, uh, or if you have principles that are allowing for anonymous access, do you lock that down to certain accounts or service providers or identity providers? And so there's a number of controls that you can set. These are just a few of an example of simple ones. But all that gets reported back in the Turbot. And so uh, you can see uh, your uh, your accounts, uh, your, your user activity. So I just refresh the page here. All right, so I could see that, that Bob uh, created the bucket and then there's some updates uh, since then. And so I can drill in and get straight to that bucket right away. Um, I could have searched for that bucket. If I was already in the console, I would see some activities pop up. Uh, but right now, I just jumped into a dashboard of this Bob Demo 115 2020 V5 bucket. And that's part of a hierarchy. So this bucket lives in US East 1, in this Amazon account, in this folder structure called Bob's Demo, in the sales organization as part of this overarching Turbot implementation. The CMDB entry for that particular bucket is here. So this is an Amazon configuration married with some Turbot configuration detail. I could see all the activity information about that bucket. So at its simplest form, um, all this activity uh, just on my last update. So Bob updated that bucket. And this is when uh, Bob moved it from, from uh, Bob's Bagels to Dave's Pizza. That then triggered Turbot to alarm that the tags weren't set correctly and then Turbot updated the tags, and then the CMDB entry was re-updated back from Dave to Bob, and now everything's marked okay. And so in a, in a quick showcase of the workflow, this is how Turbot operates just in real time. So we capture an event of a change, we then will alarm if that change is inappropriate per your policies, we'll then take some type of action, right? So if you have us enforce tagging, we'll then take the action to enforce, and then the CMDB will be updated in real time as those changes are occurring, and then Turbot's verifying that everything's okay. And so we do a complete closed loop on that from any type of change or event in the environment, Turbot's reacting to then ensure that you're always meeting company policy or company controls. 
but we, if I just look at the entire history of that bucket, there's our tens of events that fired off just on that creation. And so when Bob created that bucket, there's a number of act activities that happened from Turbot calculating the reasoning for why the policy should be uh, put in place. It could be that the bucket's named a certain way or it has a certain configuration or that if the, the creator of it was a certain person or coming from a certain group, it might dictate a different policy. And so Turbot does all that calculated reasoning behind the scenes to then uh, detail out what the policies are going to be and then it takes that programmatic action to then start alarming or saying some things are approved or taking action to correct um, like you saw. And so Turbot's much broader of a platform to handle all that into an alarm state so that you're always adhering to those controls. You could see your complete audit trail of changes that are happening in your cloud environment also in Turbot. And we put that all together in a, in a relationship so you can see your resources tied to their controls, tied to the activity, tied to the policies that are set and the permission model against them. And so I'm looking at the controls here and just my adherence to all the different policies that I have set. And this view might not be that worthwhile because I'm just looking at one bucket and it's just showing that all my controls are being adhered to. Uh, but if I went up the breadcrumbs and just went up to Bob's demo account, well, now I'm looking at a broader scope of my controls. At this level, I'm not just work, looking at one S3 bucket, I'm looking at many S3 buckets plus a bunch of other components within Amazon and Azure and Google, uh, Kubernetes, Linux, etc. If I want to drill back down into that Amazon account and then uh, maybe just filter on that, uh, on that S3 again and then just look at my buckets. And so here I'm looking at that controls that I was looking at before in one bucket. Now I'm looking at all the buckets and the control adherence to that in my Bob's demo account. But there's different contexts that you can take. I could say, well, show me all of my controls in Amazon or uh, show me those controls uh, across Amazon across a CIS report. And so I'm still filtered on you know, Bob's demo account. I'm looking at the Amazon CIS version one report uh, across uh, the, the four sections of the report. And if I wanted to drill into more details, I can then start looking at the subsections and the adherence to that. If I wanted to drill into an example one of you know, section 107 that uh, is around ensuring that your password policy has at least one symbol. And I can see my adherence down to something as uh, nuanced as an account password policy. That's also captured in our CMDB. But if I didn't want to just look at one and wanted to look at every all of the account password policies and the adherence to section 107, that's just me refiltering. So instead of looking at my, my Bob's demo account, I'm looking at the entire sales you know, organization in this environment and looking at all of their account password policies. And so that same S3 example that I had just given, that's true for even obscure resources like an IAM account password policy. So if I come in here and for IAM, uh, go to my account settings, try to change my password policy. So I'm here as a super user, so I have rights to alter uh, these type of configurations. And so if I was to remove the requirement for a symbol in my password policy and saved it, well, Turbot's gonna pick that change up just like the bucket changes, right? So any configuration change it's gonna pick up. And at that point, then it's gonna react based on the policies that you set. And sometimes those policies might relate to your own internal controls, or they might relate to um, things like your CIS benchmarks. So you could see here, now it's already in alarm state, and then it's gonna come back in and close that alarm because I have enforcements turned on. But I can just look at that CMDB entry of that account password policy. So this CMDB entry is this right here. Right, so we're capturing all those configurations and then the same thing with the audit trail. So I could see you know, Bob updated, moved requiring symbols from true to false. Turbot alarm that my password policy settings weren't configured correctly per my company policies, but it also alarmed that I'm also not meeting section 107 of the CIS report. And because I have enforcements on, Turbot then took the action to update the password policies, basically moved it from back from false to true, and then now everything's in a green state. But this is all happening in seconds behind the scenes. And so you think of developers having self-service, they can simply move forward with the changes that they're making safely. So even if there are mistakes in the environment, which of course there will be, Turbot's going to come back and always ensure that those mistakes are corrected instantly. 
you as a cloud team don't have to do any manual follow-up. These tickets aren't problems in the environment. They're handled programmatically by Turbot, all reported with full audit trail. But you do not need to be in the middle, and your developers can be elevated to stay focused on their application team uh, tier. Now, uh, other type of examples uh, could be around security groups, and you could see your adherence to your CIS controls for, for networking and, um, and how you're adhering to that. So very similar demo, very similar concepts if I was going to update a security group and show how Turbot can then alter and change that, and the CIS report would be updated in real time uh, based on those changes, and, and those corrections would occur. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll shift towards showing how to manage policies in Turbot, and there's a few different approaches that you can take. Uh, and then we'll stop there for, for some questions. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that bucket that we created uh, together. So I'll go back there. So that's just live GraphQL searches across the CMDB. Jump right back into here. Um, so now I'm looking at this particular uh, S3 bucket that we created together. If I jump over to the policies of that bucket, I can see all the policies that are inheriting onto that bucket. So I have uh, some things around like the active age of that bucket, um, how long can it live for uh, from a time lived, but maybe last used, last accessed, uh, or um, what uh, is it the bucket approved because it's in the right regions or not, or does it have the right conditions like uh, certain naming conventions or configuration details. Uh, the public access block and ensuring that it's meeting those type of standards set by the organization, uh, make sure it's not publicly exposed to uh, encryption at rest and transit, a number of different um, examples here, the tagging that we went through in more detail. Uh, but uh, if I just pick one of them, like, uh, like bucket versioning, well, for bucket versioning, and, and if you were to set that, policies are very straightforward to set. So our pre-camp policies, which we have uh, over 5,000 pre-camp policies in the platform across Amazon, Azure, Google, uh, Windows, Linux, Kubernetes, etc. cetera, um, they're pre-canned to simple point and click decisions. So in this example, it's saying for bucket versioning, do you wanna skip bucket versioning? Do you wanna just alarm if things are enabled or disabled uh, for versioning or suspended and enabled? Uh, or do you wanna enforce it? And so in the, in the demo example, you saw that versioning was enforced across, that, across the buckets. And so it's as simple as that type of selection and that particular policy is actually set at a higher level. So the default is set to skip. The global Turbot tier, there's no policy set. But in the sales organization, I actually have this policy set and it's inheriting down to the bucket I just created. So it's inheriting down to my demo account folder, my, uh, my Amazon account within the US East 1 region down to this bucket. So this inheritance is happening in real time. The policy was set above. And so when I created the bucket, the bucket relates in that in that organizational structure, and that's why it got that policy to enforce versioning. So policies can be as simple as the skip, check, and force, or like a radio button, or maybe it's a Boolean, enable, disable. There's also um, more advanced ways to set policies. And so you, there we have a calculated policy mode that you can set. Uh, so you can uh, create conditions based on the pre-canned logic. So if there's specific nuances that you want to set to say, well, versioning is not always enabled, even within my sales organization, maybe versioning is only enabled if the bucket has a certain name or it has um, you know, a certain tag enabled on it. And so if I just picked a uh, bucket here uh, to test with, so we have a testing framework. So here I can select a, test, uh, a testable resource I can run a GraphQL query. So this is just pulling the, the name and the tags. And so here it's just showing at this example um, bucket, and this query, this is the type of metadata information I'm working with. And then here is I lay in the, uh, a template. So this template would then put the conditions or wrapped around those pre cam policies. So in this example, it's saying, you know, if the bucket name is Bob Demo Temp, then disable versioning or suspend it. Or if the, the bucket has the tags test equals temp, the key value pair test temp, 
then disable it. But if it doesn't meet those conditions, then enable. So this is an example where um, uh, the bucket I created earlier didn't have those conditions. That's why it actually enforced uh, versioning. But this is a real life test case. So as you're building these policies, which we're happy to support you on, or you could build yourself and using our testing capabilities, it's real time um, testing. So if I change that logic there, it shows how it's a, a difference in the policy. But once you set your policy, whether it's in this advanced mode or it's just simply skip, check, and force, we give you uh, precedence requirements that you can set. So you could say, I require that this is mandated across all of my resources. Uh, you can also just say this is recommended, where it's a default value, which then delegates authority down to your app teams to toggle it. And so you can require policies that can only uh, change with exceptions to the rule. You can also recommend policies that set a default and then others downstream can toggle it. So very flexible to set that. Um, you can annotate why you're setting a policy. You can also expire the policy. And whether this is an exception or this is uh, a policy that's that's set, you can expire those decisions for pre-canned timeframes or some custom period of time. But that gives you the uh, the full uh, ability to um, to set those policies across. And just to show you a calculated policy work in real time, if I went back to S3. And I went to that bucket that we created together and added that tag. So the condition on that calculated policy was to say, you know, disable versioning if it has a tag called test temp. And I saved it. Well, Turbot's going to pick up that change. Right, so here it just picked up that uh, the, uh, Bob added the key, the key value pair test temp, and then you could see the policy change now to enforce disable or suspension of of versioning, and then it said, well, yeah, now you're not meeting policy anymore because the policy is that if it meets this condition, you shouldn't have versioning set, and then it just suspended versioning. It just updated the bucket um, back to enable to suspended. And now we're okay for this very particular bucket with this condition. There's uh, other advanced ways to set policies uh, where just the pre-can, which I showed you, the calculated policies, but another type of policy that you can set are Terraform stacks that you can deploy through Turbot. And so to show you uh, that, what I'll do is I'll get to a Terraform stack Right. So here I have a Terraform stack that's running as a policy within the environment. And so here I'm enforcing this stack to be configured. And the policy for what that's enforcing is actually just my Terraform HCL code. And so instead of saying, you know, skip, check, enforce for, you know, versioning or encryption or whatever it might be, uh, the policy setting here is actually just Terraform. And so in this example, I can use Turbot to automatically not only deploy my Terraform stacks across whatever scope, in this example, across the sales organization and all the Amazon accounts associated there. But it also will always ensure that that stack is being configured. So if I was to change the logic here and say, you know, role, monitoring role 58, uh, 57 is no longer approved and I'm, I'm upping some type of configuration in it. So in this example, I have an Amazon IAM role uh, that's also an IAM uh, monitoring policy that I'm being created. Uh, with some custom IM conditions. And then I'm attaching that role and policy together. And so if I was to run this new stack across the environment, that policy is now inheriting to all of those Amazon accounts underneath, inclu including my, my Bob Demo account. And so now that's the new policy. So now Turbot's going to go out and reconfigure your stack. And then it's also going to always ensure, so if someone tries to mess with that stack outside of um, outside of this uh, pipeline, Turbot's going to reinforce it. So therefore, Turbot's actually managing state in our CMDB. So you don't have to manage local state or remote state. Uh, the CMDB is updated in real time, so that could actually be your state file and context for Turbot to always ensure your stack is being adhered to. You can visualize 
um, any of our controls running in real time. And so if I was just to view the log, uh, I could see that Turbot's actually launching a container right now to actually isolate that Terraform run into its own container, and then it's going to execute it um, across uh, the environment. Uh, so this takes tens of seconds to run, and we'll we'll see it uh, we'll see it kick off shortly. But I'll go into the IAM account or the IAM service. I'll go to roles. And you can see that my monitoring role 58 is already created and role 57 is deleted. And so role 58 is now in this environment with the attached monitoring policy that was associated in that stack. Now, if I was to come in as a super user and you know accidentally or intentionally remove that policy attachment, right? As a super user, I'm able to. I have that type. I have those type of rights in this environment, so I wasn't prevented. But Turbot's going to react just like you saw on the the S3 tagging or the IAM password policy. It's going to react and say this is no, this is not part of your configuration. And it's going to reattach the policy because that's what your Terraform had stated. All this is reported back uh, into Turbot. Um, just do a refresh on the activity. Um, let me close some screens here. Right, so you could see that all the changes that I just had made. So when I actually changed that that policy there from moving it from role 57 to 58, that's also captured in our audit trail. So even your Terraform HCL and your policy statements, those are captured as changes, just like an S3 bucket is being updated. Um, what is being created and destroyed is all captured there. So all the other accounts that um, also got that role deployed to it, I can actually see the what was created and, and what was destroyed. So I could see that summary, I could see the full plan and apply um, process logs as well uh, with it. And now if I just come back here and refresh the page, the monitoring policy is now uh, reattached from our Terraform control.